Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Now Steve is not here today because it's story time. Yay, 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 yay. Yay. I'm going to talk about my toxic friend. We've been talking a lot about toxic relationships during our lives. Now actually in real time, we are going live in about 15 minutes to talk about how to move on past a toxic relationship so you should be able to see the video on the channel already so anyway i will talk to you about a certain toxic friend that hour i had the opportunity to be acquainted with now how i met this girl okay for the sake of the story i'm going to call this girl Barbie, right? How I met Barbie was during my many visits to Zimbabwe. Now, most of you know that I'm Zimbabwean, proudly so, so I do obviously visit my mother country. So I met Barbie through my the then partner. So anyway, we met, we got on, we hit it off, and yeah, we're like girls, you know, yeah, going out together, doing all the things that girlies do. I went to Zimbabwe a few more visits and kept meeting her and we got closer and closer we we're chatting even while i was here in england we would be talking whatsapp and all that kept in touch now this time i went to zimbabwe and it was a very difficult time um of my life at that point i was i had my own issues anyway i was going through difficulties in my relationship with her friend so she knew everything that was going on with my then toxic boyfriend right so anyway uh one night i went to visit my cousin's boyfriend now you guys know i like mjola stories i love it so my cousin told me hey I, I i'm going out with this guy um things are serious and all that and i was like oh gosh yeah wedding bells i want to see my cousin-in-law and all that so she told her boyfriend that i was coming she wasn't in the country at that time so it was, it was just a boyfriend so i told barbie oh let's go and see my my new cousin-in-law so we went to the house it, you know we had a nice time we spent the evening there we were treated like royalty you know it was really nice and then we left i think about maybe just after midnight we left now what i didn't know now this is toxic thing number one right now with me guys when i've got a friend right when you've got an opportunity to be my friend right you've got a friend for life yeah i'm that kind of girl you know like you know you're my g i would treat you like my sister you know i wouldn't do thumbs up what i wouldn't expect you to do something that i wouldn't do to you you know what i mean you're my friend we're good like right? so anyway um what i didn't know was while we were at my cousin-in-law's house bear in mind guys my cousin-in-law was quite well up you know he was a legible eligible bachelor right so you know he had his you know his things going you know big nice house nice area everything going on for him right so barbie i think was a bit opportunistic in this case right so barbie slipped her number or i don't know how they exchanged numbers because i didn't see it happening but it turned out that while we were at my cousin-in-law's house barbie exchanged numbers and after i left zimbabwe barbie and my cousin-in-law met up did their thing things got bad and then that's how now my cousin-in-law went to my cousin and told him that you know oh sandra's friend that sandra's friend did this and that and that i'm thinking how did she do that i didn't see you guys in changing numbers how did she do that so it turns out that barbie was trying to get on with my cousin-in-law that was toxic thing number one right okay we finished that one and that same night, right, so this cousin-in-law of mine, it was a time where money was, was really difficult in Zimbabwe and I needed some money for spending, you know, for in, while I'm in Zimbabwe. So this cousin-in-law said, okay, fine, let's go to the shops and I'll get some money for you. So I said, no problem. Um, and while we're there, we're just chatting and then we were actually saying our goodbyes. Yeah, so he was then going to drive back to his house and we would drive home. And while we're talking, my the then boyfriend, guys, he was toxic, right? So he arrived. And when he arrived, he just arrived with a bang. Oh my God. Um, he then asked me who he was, who my cousin-in-law was. And I told him, I said, you know, he's so-and-so. He knew my cousin. So I said, so-and-so is a boyfriend. And oh my God, he wasn't buying that. He thought that my Barbie had hooked me up with this guy. Rah, rah. And I said, no, 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 that's not it. And honestly, things got a bit heated that we just like, you know what? This uh, cousin-in-law of mine just said, guys, go so we just rented the car and we drove off 
and as we drove off now this toxic boyfriend of mine got into his car and followed us guys it was like a proper road rage you no know, proper road race honestly it was just so so bad and i was thinking uh-uh i want to go back to england in one piece here so i told bobby i said because i wasn't driving bobby was driving my car so i said bobby you know what just pop the car here and uh you know what let's let me deal with him let me see why he's being the way he is this is a big problem here so uh but i'm not gonna let him i'm not gonna die by an accident so anyway um bobby stopped the car and uh the moment we stopped the car this guy came right he stopped the car behind us and pounced straight to the car and dragged Bobby out of the car. Bear in mind guys that Bobby cannot drive uh, a car. You know those people that can't drive with shoes on. So she was driving bare feet. So this guy just pretty much just dragged Bobby out. Her friend, by the way, her friend, dragged her friend out of the car and um, and I was like, oh my god, what's happening? And then he sat on, on the driver's seat. I was like, oh my god. And then he started driving. So Bobby was left out there, bare feet, at about i think what this must have been about like one o'clock or two a.m on saturday sunday morning it was honestly it was dangerous where we were it was a bit dark as well there was no street lights or it was honestly it was bad but anyway um bobby managed to walk because we were not far from the shop still so she managed to walk towards the shops and uh, while she was walking um there was another car that passed and they recognized bobby so this guy's and they were friends with bobby so this guy's um gave bobby a lift and bobby said no i don't want to go home to her house so at least at, at that point she wasn't being a toxic friend she wanted to go to my house um to my parents house to tell them about what happened just in case anything happened because honestly guys the way that things were going i honestly i was just prepared to load i'm coming home i thought i was gonna die I was at a point where I was like, you know what, I'm going to die. And if I die, this is me. I'm putting myself with this toxic person and I'm going to die. And I've got no one to blame but myself. So um, she went to tell my mom. It was about maybe five miles from our house to where the toxic boyfriend was staying. And my mom had to stop three times for the toilet. She ran running tummy. She was worried she was in that you know anxiety stuff yeah um because she was thinking you know because when Bobby told her what happened she was like oh my god she's gonna die now my child's gonna die now she just came here to visit us and this is what's happening you know she was worried there's a parenthood so Bobby and my parents arrived at the toxic boyfriend's house um probably about two hours later and at this point this guy i'm telling you guys i'm so Swear to God, I think he's bipolar. Like one minute is like up to here, he wants to kill me, and the next minute he's fine. So I don't know what happened. But at this point, I think I must have been so used to his up and downs. I was sleeping. I was sleeping. Like you know, sleeping. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know what how things used to work anyway. But yeah, I was sleeping. So by the time they got there, I said, "Oh no, 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 don't worry, I'm fine. I'll sleep here. I'll come tomorrow." You know, so they was like, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm fine. No problem. Now, guys, this is toxic friendship. Red flag number two. When they found out that um, I was okay um, and I said, you know, you guys go, I'll, I'll, I'll come home tomorrow. Um, they took Barbie to her house. Now, my good friend Barbie, guys, you know what she did to me? She started... <laughs> I don't even know why she did what she did guys she told my mom that okay let me try and do a backstory right my by my mom in english culture she is my auntie as in my mom's sister but she's not my mom to me she's not my mom's sister because she brought me up now guys i need to put you in the situation now this woman right she bought my first nappy so when i was born my mom i don't know if i shared the story before my mom was meant to come to england and then she found to be pregnant so she couldn't come anymore so she disappointed her parents so her parents did not want to have anything to do with her whatsoever and you know guys those times parents were like really strict so my mom's sister right is the one who bought my very first nappy my very first clothes everything i needed she pretty much brought me up guys not many people know that this woman did not give birth to me right she brought me up you know with amongst her kids i was like at her house 
that, that's what, my home, that's where I go, even if I go to Zimbabwe right now, that's where I go, you know, um, I used to wear the same clothes, you know, we used to twin up with the, with the, the children, we were, she's my mum, she bought the ticket for me to come here, you know, she, she was running around for me, if there was anything, my, my mum, my, my, my biological mum lives in Bulawayo, so she was too far, so if I wanted anything, anything at all, and nothing was too much for this woman, yeah, nothing was too much for her, whatever I wanted, I was, I grew up a bit, slightly spoiled a little bit, yeah, you know, in that, you know, my grandparents spoiled me, and my, my auntie spoiled me, so this woman, I don't even call her my auntie, I don't even call her my nini, she's my mom, I actually call her mom, and, and husband, I call her dad, because they are my parents, they brought me up, guys, this girl, I, I, I saw her as my friend, and I was going through a difficult time as well, and she was there, so I thought that she was being my friend, so when I think we're going to blow away or somewhere, then I said, oh no, actually, I'm going to my mom's house, she was like, but I thought your mom lives in Narari, I said, no, that's my other mom, that's my mom's sister, so not many people know, even up to this day, that this woman, even for my wedding, guys, my wedding, this woman ran around for everything, if anything, if I want anything right now, she's the one who does it, Bobby, right, she told my mum that she, I thought that she was jealous of me now guys how does that make sense how would I think that this woman would be jealous of me this woman who's done so much for me how how ungrateful would I be and why would I even say that and why would I say it to her if of all the of all the people do you know what I mean but she said some very very nasty things oh this woman is always doing this always doing this things I didn't even say but I don't know why she felt the need of telling my mom that. You know what I mean? This woman that she just seen who was um, going to the toilet like mad because she was worried, sick, that something was going to happen to me, right? Then she opens her mouth and says, actually, you know, Sandra, right? Um, it's a shame. It just pains me to see that you're so worried about Sandra because she doesn't really respect you in that way as well. It doesn't, she doesn't reciprocate. I'm like, what? I love this woman. To me, my mom and this woman, there's no difference. So why would I say that? Do you know what I mean? Honestly, I was so pained. I could not believe. And the thing is, guys, some of the things were like red flags because this this Barbie, I didn't even know any of her relatives, guys. I didn't know anybody else around her except the then boyfriend. That was the only person I knew was linked to her. She didn't talk to her family. She wasn't involved with her mom. No, no I didn't know anything about even her siblings, whether she had siblings, whether she didn't. I didn't know. But that, right? And the thing is, my mum, auntie, she didn't tell me about this. It was a few days after when she told me, ah, Chipo, why would you say that? I said, what? Why would I say what? Then she told me all this that happened. I'm like, what? Honestly, I was furious. And um, the thing is, though, my mum told me about it um, on my way to the airport coming back to the UK so I didn't get chance to I think she probably didn't change the number so I didn't get a chance to confront her but honestly guys can you believe how toxic some people can be they can come to your life and see oh my god Sandra seems to be a really good life she seems to be a good relationship with her relatives and with, with her life and her mom and everybody and she comes and tries to destroy that how can you come in into my into my life yeah and go to people that are close to me and start making stories up Honestly, I was like, whoa. But um, I didn't speak to her for about, I think, maybe four years or so. And then, guys, the big, the big finale happened. Now, guys, I'm going to, I know this video is very, very long. So I'm going to do this in two parts. Guys, you need to come back for part two. Now, this was the part where I said, do you know what, Bobby? You and I, right? You and I are friends. I'm friends. Full stop forget you know me so anyway guys i hope you have enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe comment like and all that just that us youtubers tell you to do until next time guys bye bye